wanted to go ahead and get started on the next section of what we were talking about for the Olympic Games. So we're going to be touching on the modern era of the Olympic Games. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you remember, we last left, last left off with the ancient Olympic Games, which got shut down in 393 AD. Well, we've come to a point now where the current Olympic Games has to be reestablished. So uh, the first Olympic Games to take place in the modern era uh, takes place in 1896 in Athens, Greece. Don't get this confused with the ancient Olympic Games, which took place in Olympia, Greece. These took place in Athens. Now, the person who was the forefather, uh, as you, uh, if you would like to put it, of getting the Olympic Games reinstated was Pierre de Coubertin. And now Pierre de Coubertin came up with the idea essentially from reading history books about the ancient Olympic Games. And he decided that this was something that would prove to be actually very uh, resourceful in terms of promoting peace. He had the same similar idea as the ancient Greeks had with their uh, proposition to start the games, which was to promote peace. Uh, he came to the same understanding at this time period that, you know, the Olympics would be a good idea to promote peace as well as international friendship. Now he came up with this idea in 1894. He brought it in front of a group of politicians and diplomats. And this later led to the Olympic Games being started two years later in 1896 in Athens. Now I will point out that even though he did want to promote peace, you know, stop the fighting between nations because now uh, you know, we're not just talking about Greece and their war between their city states. We're talking about nations fighting each other. Even though that was the purpose of the Olympic Games, it still essentially is the purpose of the Olympic Games. Uh, there have been three modern games that have been canceled due to wars. Uh, that would be the 1916 Olympic Games, which was canceled because of World War One, and then the 1940 and 1944 Olympic Games which were shut down because of World War II. Now, one of the bigger differences from these Olympic Games versus the ancient games was the inclusion of different countries. Remember, the ancient Olympic Games, you had to be of Greek descent to, in order to compete. Well, the change, of course, made here because we won international friendship. Uh, the first Olympic Games had 14 countries that took part in the games. Now, of these 14 countries, uh, your biggest contributors in, as far as competitors to the games were Germany, Greece, France, and Great Britain. Uh, they presented the most athletes to the games. So they were, uh, essentially they had the upper hand in terms of winning events. Uh, and of course, having the most face value at the games in a sense. Now, the last part that we're gonna to touch on right here are gonna be the Olympic rings. Now, what makes the Olympic rings interesting is that each one of the colors represents at least one color in every national flag around the world. Uh, this was their way of in showing inclusion of everybody is they included at least one color from their flag that will show up on the Olympic rings. And of course, showing them intertwined, showing them linked together as, you know, saying that we're all one. Now with the reestablishment of the Olympic games, you actually had a new event which came about and that was the marathon run. Now the interesting thing about the marathon run is it actually has its roots in Greek traditions. So, as the saying goes, uh, if you look back um, through Greek history, there was a time when the Greeks were fighting with the Persians. Now, it came to a point where the Greeks felt like they were either going to win the war, or at least they were at the point where they could claim victory. So what some of the Greek soldiers did is they actually ran from the city of Marathon, Greece, back to Athens, 
to report the news of the victory that they had over the Persians. Now, this was actually 25 miles between Marathon, Greece and Athens, Greece. So the first marathon actually took place essentially running that same route. It was a 25 mile marathon that took place starting at Marathon, Greece and ending in the Olympic Stadium in Athens. Now, as we know today, uh, marathons now are 26.2 miles, but this one was kind of to honor the story essentially of the Greek tradition of running from Marathon to Athens. And of course, you know, with the race starting in Marathon, that's how you get the name the Marathon Run. Now, if we're talking about the Marathon, essentially we have to bring up the name of Spiridon Lewis uh, or Luis. Uh, Spirit on Lewis, he is a Greek nationalist who won the very first marathon. This is, of course, important with the Athens Games taking place in his home country. Um, the story of the marathon itself originating in Greece, uh, it was actually said that the Greek delegates decided that if they were only going to win one event, it had to be the marathon. So they put their best athlete that they had into the marathon and, you know, lo and behold, he came out on top. Now, with that being said, he actually was not the first medalist, well, at least not the first gold medalist in Olympic, in the modern Olympic history. That honor actually goes to a U.S. triple jumper named James Conley. Uh, James Conley won the triple jump on April 6, 19, well, excuse me, 18. 96. And now moving on to the popularity of the Olympic Games. Now, in the beginning, when it first came back, it actually was not very successful. Uh, the main reason for this was because during that same time period, the Olympic Games was competing with uh, world fairs. Now, we have state fairs and carnivals and things like that to happen in each respective state. Well, the World Fair was essentially a big, big fair that took place that invited other countries. One country would showcase a World Fair and other countries would come to visit. So that really took a hit on the Olympic Games when they first came back because they were already with competing with something that was well established. Well, it took all the way till about nine, well, it took until the 1924 Paris Olympics before they actually started to gain any traction. Now, what helped with this was actually the level of participation that happened in those games. So the numbers really jumped up and by the time then you had, had 44 nations that were competing at the Olympic games and a little over 3000 athletes competed. You also had more than 100 women competing. So there was more inclusion that began to happen. Uh, this was also one of the first Olympics that included men and women competing at the same Olympics instead of separating them like the older um, ancient Olympic Games used to. And one last little tidbit is actually this was the same year, the 1924 Paris Games, when the uh, Winter Olympics began. This is one of the few times that the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics took place in the same year. As we know now, both of those games are separated by two years to give each you know, set of games their own respective celebration. Uh, also because it came to a point there were some athletes that actually participated in both the Summer and Olympic Games. Uh, but that is going to wrap up this lesson on the modern Olympic Games. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm always available.